Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Rise and Fall. And as you can see, we are going to be talking about Jorge Masvidal. Now, this is a very interesting, interesting one. I put up a poll uh, for Rise and Fall choices. Darren Till, Jorge, or Karate High, Michelle Watterson, who just retired after what, 31 fights, 5 fight losing streaks, just retired on Saturday. Today is now Tuesday at 12.33 when I'm recording this. So, it was pretty unanimous that Jorge Masvidal was the next rise and fall. So, first, I want to start with the rise. And you look at it, MMA Fighter of the Year for 2019, number two. 43 greatest MMA striker of all time there might be an argument that he should be a little bit higher in this his UFC career record wise out of 22 fights as we see right here he's 12 and 10 only been finished one time that was by Kamara Usman a little a couple years ago at this point seven finishes out of his 12 wins excuse me sorry um Again, start at the beginning. You know, he's been fighting since 2003, as we see down here. He'll be 40 years old here in November, getting ready to box Nate Diaz. They fought once in MMA. We all know how that fight went. It would have been curious to see how it would have went as the fight progressed, but Nate Diaz got cut. They stopped the fight. It is what it is. But as we see here, he starts 4-0, losing to a Rafael Sunsound. If you remember... Uh, Sun's a, a small dude, so to lose by him in 2005 when he was 23, I believe he's born in 82 with Rafael Sunsao. You know, and there for a little while, it was 14 and 2 up until 2008, five years, 14 and 2. It's pretty damn good. His one uh, finish, one time he was finished in his career was Rodrigo Dan back in, uh, what is that, Sengoka, Sengoku 3. If you go back and you watch that punch, it was kind of the same punch that Kamaru hit him with, really. And then <clears throat> I really remember him getting inverted triangled by Toby Amata. Very, very interesting uh, submission that, was hit, that he had gotten caught in. Kind of went limp as the uh, inverted triangle got really tight. It's a pretty crazy, crazy uh, submission. If you haven't seen it, definitely check that out. I don't want to play the video. I don't want my video to get copyrighted. So please understand that. And then losing to Paul Daly in a shark fight. Losing to Gibbon Menendez in strike force. You know, so many, so many fun fights. Tim Moon's one, if you haven't watched that on, uh, it was on YouTube a couple years ago. Really, really interesting, fun fight. Jorge Masvidal actually wrestled Timmins in there. Didn't want to be part of his stand-up. Pretty interesting. 7-0 Michael Chiesa when he was not underrated. Mm, I don't know about that, but Michael Chiesa at 7-0 beat him. Uh, one second left of the second round. That was a really fun fight. And then I think here's kind of where the 155 run kind of started making him rethink what he was doing uh, i think he this is the one he also got wheel kicked didn't really ever recover from this uh, this one's a really fun fight to go back and you watch it or he didn't look great necessarily but it's a very interesting fight to go back and watch after all these years in 2013 so getting pat pat healy who's despite his record a pretty good grappler so this is another good one. Darren Cookshank, another pretty good one. James Krause, that was a tough one for James Krause. Um, before all the crazy stuff, he's actually supposed to fight Bobby Green a couple of times, as we see here in 2012, here in 2014, here in 2015. Oh, man, people remember Norm, Norman Park. That's a, he was a pretty good fighter. Benson Henderson was supposed to. Lost that weird split decision with Aya Quinta said you know boo me that whole thing wild argument the masvidal won that fight so that would have been a couple in a row four in a row that would have been destroyed caesar fiera then he got that title shot lost by split decision 
unbelievable. Lost to Lorenzo Larkin by split decision. And then beat Pearson, Ellenberger, and then beat Cowboy. Moving up a weight class. So I think the Pearson one might have also been 55. I know the Cowboy one was 170. Ellenberger, I think, was 170 as well. This one, the Jig Ellenberger one, shouldn't, should not have been a uh, finish for Masvidal simply because Ellenberger's foot got caught in the freaking, um, like, matting of the cage next to the fence. His foot got caught and then he got finished. Very, very weird uh, situation that went on there. I don't think it should have counted as a finish for him, but I guess whatever. Big Cowboy, lost to Maya Thompson. Thompson beat him up pretty good. Then he came back two year, about a little over a year and a half. Really, a little over a year and a half. You know, beat Darren Till, beat Asker, as we know, beat Nate Diaz, and then he goes to lose to Kamaro twice. Nothing holds your head down. Lost to Colby. He looked really bad in that matchup. He was supposed to fight Leon Edwards. Then his last one, he fought Gilbert Burns. It didn't look very good in a matchup that's actually a decent matchup-wise. You know, you put them side by side. It's a decent matchup. It really, really is. You know, and then I always fighting Nate Diaz uh, this in four days. Four days, he's fighting Nate Diaz again. So, again, he has victories over, he said, Cowboy, Diaz, you know, Ellenberger when Ellenberger was kind of out of his prime. Prime Ellenberger was really, really good. Really good. You know, beat, where's the one? He head kicked freaking Eve Edwards right here. He was 10 and 2 back in 20, 20, uh, 2007. Head kicked him. Head kicked him. Beat both Healy brothers. They said the Rodrigo Dam fight was uh, pretty wild. Yeah, again, it's basically the same punch that Usman hit him with. He was finished twice in his career by that punch. So, again, I think the biggest thing you can take away from Masvidal is just that swag. And personally, I think his best performances were at 155. I'm curious to see. Um, let's see. So, 170. He went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 2, 4, Six, five, and six at one seventy. You know, yeah, it was five and three without, or five and two without the uh, uh, four or five losing streak that he ended on. But it, he was just so much better at lightweight. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so much better. You know. He spent majority of his career at one seventy, at one fifty five. You know, I I really really appreciated him at one fifty five. I know it was a hard weight class, hard weight cut for him. I, I I know, but if he's a little bit more disciplined in some aspects, he probably would have made it a little bit easier. How uh, this career disclosed earnings is one point one point five million. It's way more than that. You know, I've been training at ATT for a really long time now. Last fought about a year ago at this point. I just, the thing that I always remember Jorge Masvidal is a man of his word of not putting up with bull, bull crap. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people, especially nowadays, really got to appreciate how good Masvidal was and what he truly stood for. And I think that's a big thing with me is... At the end, he may not have been great, but coming up, the rise, he was really, really something good. People always forget the downfall of these fighters. I mean, people always remember the downfall. People always forget the rise, the come up. You know, right now, we see this so far with guys like Ian Gary, you know, Talbot's on a two-fight win streak. Really, his only test, I guess, three because of the, um, um, actually, four, three in the actual octagon in one of the contender series. So that that's a decent one there too. You know, Lucky, we see it. Uh, Vincius Oliveira, we see it. Um, 
the other really good Brazilian that just knocked out Radke. Oh, Carlos Prades, we see it, the rise of these fighters. And I think it's such, it's what makes the sport so fun. It's what makes the sport, you know, the reason why I love it. Moments like when Watterson is crying because she's retiring with the video package. And she's crying. She's, she's, you know, laying herself down with Joe. It's some of those moments that are just so special. Cowboy takes his cowboy hat off and sex sets it in that octagon. And you see Joe Rogan asking Donald, you doing this? And, you know, guys like Darius, who are a nice guy, but can fight his ass off. Puts everything on the line. Not like anybody else doesn't. I get that. But sometimes it comes out a little bit more, a little bit more special with certain fighters. Kobe Covington makes it a joke. The best trash talk in, trash talker in history, to me, Chael Pete Sonnen. That's it. But this is another Rise and Fall episode, what, six, seven, something like that. I got a playlist. Rise and Fall of Masvidal. We all remember the fall. Check out his rise. It's a great journey. Big, big fan. Thank you, Masvidal. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy. Smack that like button. Let me know who you want to see next. Is it Darren Till? Is it Michelle Watterson? Let me know. See you at the next one. Peace.